You're listening to Metal and High Heels, the official podcast from the magazine about metal, lifestyle, and entertainment. Hey everybody, welcome to the episode number 88 of the Metal and High Heels podcast. I'm Kiki and today I'm here with Marcela Bobbio. How are you doing today? I am doing fine. It's been uh, a lovely past few days, even though the winter kind of returned for a little bit. Last week we had, I think, like 20-something degrees Celsius in the Netherlands. And then the week afterwards, I look outside and it's snowing. and I'm like... Yeah, it was very, very sudden, all of it. But um, that's global warming, I guess. Very much so, yes. Uh, last time you and I spoke was, um, well, last time we had you here as a guest on the podcast, it was 70 episodes ago in 2018. What? Yeah, in 2018, around the release of your second solo album, Through Your Eyes. Yes, oh my God. It feels like longer ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot has happened since then. Hasn't it? A lot has happened, yes. <laughs> yeah, so how about we, we catch up a little bit and we can start right there with um your with your solo works. Um what happened after through your eyes and is there any more in the works? For sure. Um well I, I would I'm not gonna do the, the the whole story, you know, behind it at this very moment. I'm sure we'll get to that, but um Let's just say there has, there's, there's been enough happening in my life the past few years that, uh, that I think I really have to put in a solo album. So that's, I think that's definitely the next thing that I want to do. Um, and it's taken a little while. Yes. Yes. Some, mm -hmm. some, uh, some detours, <laughs> some things <laughs> happening, but, um. I, yes, I would definitely like to. I would definitely like to uh, to make a new solo album uh, in the near future. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That sounds great. And that was also around the time where you were where you were working with the Gentle Storm, I think, and also Fior was um, in the picture back then. Yeah. So much has happened. The, the the timeline, the exact timeline of those things is is a little bit blurry at this moment in my head, but I think yes, it was around that time. Um yeah, two thousand eighteen, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and you were already kind of um hinting to it and or mentioning about everything that has been going on. Uh do you want to make maybe share a little bit of what has been happening in your life as well in the past few years? Sure. Well, let's just uh, say that I've been going through some rough patches. <laughs> so first, um, um, but I think it, it's 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 all uh, well, not very pleasant uh, stuff. But uh, it will link back to the main topic of today and uh, and and to how I think I've grown as a person, so it's fine. So, um, so first of all, yes, the, the, uh, I think for me, if I'm looking back, like the first sort of like um, shock moment was when, when I left Fur, because that really had a big impact on, uh, on how I felt. Actually, I think that threw me to this like sort of like dark pit that I was kind of stuck in for a little mm -hmm. while. Uh, and then <laughs> um, a relationship that I have had for really, really many years uh, also ended. Let's just keep it at that. And then <laughs> uh, I got, uh, well, I think pretty much uh, one of the worst news that you can get, uh, which is that mm -hmm. I had cancer, cervical cancer, um, stage three, right after the the uh, very lovely shows that we had with Arion into the Electric Castle in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a way, I'm kind of glad that I didn't go to the doctor before because otherwise I wouldn't have enjoyed that at all. On the, on the other hand, well, you can imagine it's uh, a roller coaster of 
emotions and disbelief and just like being completely thrown out of uh yeah anything that you would consider important and now there's this thing that basically commands your whole existence for a while um mm -hmm. yeah and uh it was very scary very very scary because um like i said it was rather advanced and um normally cervical cancer is uh can be treated like very easily and like in very non-invasive um, ways, okay. uh, except in my case, uh, you know, I, I, it was a little bit more advanced. So actually, I had to undergo quite an intensive treatment mm -hmm. that started uh, around the end of 2019 and ended mid February 2020. Um, oh wow. Yeah, so it was very heavy. And um, I mean, I was warned <laughs> that it would really take like it would take a long while to for my body to recover from the treatment itself because it's, uh, it was chemotherapy, it was uh, radiation, it was a whole basically combo, a whole cocktail of of those things. So, um, yeah, it took me a really, really long time to get physically uh, in shape again, you know, like it, it really, it really takes a big toll on it. But um, I am very happy to say, and I'm going to knock on wood, just in case, uh, um, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm totally cancer free. I have been for over a year now. And yes, uh, yeah, I'm so happy. <laughs> Yes, that is amazing news. That is amazing news. Thank you so much, first of all, for, for sharing that, that with us, for sharing your story. I was actually um, hoping you would, because I'm very sure that uh, a lot of people out there um, can use those words of courage and, um, and that your personal story can, um, can serve as that for other people. I hope so. I hope so. You know, and... Um... It's kind of hard sometimes because um, I do remember at some point I wasn't able to do much with testimonials, you know, because if you go search, you will find everything, you know, you will find, uh, you know, very sad stories. You will find very happy stories, you know, a little bit of yeah. everything. But um, if anything, uh, I can give anyone who has had that terrible news is that um just keep positive and keep pulling positive energy into your head you can do this it's a fucking roller coaster but um if you beat it then you will come out stronger i do feel stronger i feel For sure like a much happier person like i um I'm I'm very happy that I can look back into that whole nightmare and say like, well, you know what? I I got a lot of positive things out of it. Mm -hmm. I uh, I used to worry about everything, every little stupid thing, and now I I cannot be bothered. <laughs> Which is okay. it's like, you know what? There are things that are actually scary, and there are things that I should actually be worried about. So those all are tiny things. Not gonna bother with them. <laughs> That's a great attitude. Yes, that is really great. I was actually just listening the other day to uh, an interesting podcast. Um, it is called "This Podcast Will Kill You." It's about health, so or and or diseases actually. But um, um, it's hosted by two women, and they go through both the historical and the scientific aspects of different um, illnesses and also uh, prevention and everything. So um, I was just listening to an episode about um, HPV and, ca and how that can cause uh, cervical cancer. And obviously the, 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 biggest, um, the biggest message, so to speak, from that was um, go to your screenings, always go to your screenings, yes. uh, try to get the vaccine as uh, early as possible. And um, if you're a person with a uterus, 
and um <laughs> for, yeah for and all of us uterus bearing <laughs> people out there yes mm -hmm. definitely and you know it, th this thing it's so scary you know you never want to go do that because you think like oh it's such a confronting thing it's unpleasant um but i think um well i i I, th i think i did like tell myself like okay if there is anything that you're gonna give back the world is at least every so often um not that i have this like huge um uh, voice you know like but i do i do know that i can reach some people and if there is mm -hmm. anything that i can give you beautiful ladies please do get your pap tests do get your breast exams because mm -hmm. it just can save you from such a load of turmoil you know um uh, if these things are detected a lot quicker then you can get rid of it so fast and medical advances are so you know so good and 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 it's very treatable just make sure don't wait just go do it do it as a personal favor for me that's a lovely message thank you so much again um and uh yes also oh before uh before we go forward with the other topics um the last time i saw you in person was at your um graduation test for the universal voice teacher Oh my God. That was also 2018. And uh, since then, how has that been going? What experiences have you been able to have? Um, obviously, that, uh, that is also intertwined in all of this timeline that we were just talking about. Yeah. I did have to put it on hold for a little, little bit, but mm -hmm. um, the... Um... I'm, I'm back on the horse, you know? It's, I, uh, it's tricky because I have... I have to remember that I cannot do as much as I used to do. Like I also want to make sure that I take a little bit better care of myself because I used to work 24 seven. I was mm -hmm. always working and with working, I mean also like work and also music stuff, you know, like all mm -hmm. the time. So I'm, I'm trying to take care, uh, to take better care of myself and have some time off from time to time. But I am, uh, still working with universal voice i am uh, uh teaching actually at the uh, universal voice uh institute in amsterdam mm -hmm. from time to time and i am oh, working nice. with them uh also in order to get like basically like the next next step of diploma which would be a course instructor diploma so i would be able to also teach all of the courses and give the lessons and train Mm -hmm. teachers which is something that i'm super excited about because one of the things that i would really like to achieve with all of this knowledge is to be able to um share it with latin america because i have the impression yes. uh most of you know i think that i am from mexico and uh i think we have so much to say and i would just i would love to be able to share all these tools you know with Mm -hmm. with the voices in latin america because we're so passionate we are so uh you know when we sing when we play we just give everything we have and i think it would be so amazing to uh you know like strengthen that with all of these not all of this knowledge all this technique that i'm such a fan of yeah oh that is great and how is um how did that work get affected by the by the pandemic now Well, everything has to be, you know, sort of like uh, uh, the, how do you say it, adapted to the situation. Um, so for a while, we were also doing the lessons, everything online, you know, like through mm -hmm. Zoom, kind of like platform, kind of like this, mm -hmm. um, which works. I mean, it's still very doable, but it's not the same yeah than just being face to face you know the 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 group dynamic is so nice when you're like with uh when i was you know taking the uh the lessons there with the whole group it's just so nice to be there with a group of people that are so immersed in singing um yeah so we had to miss it for a while and now um 
we are doing the 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 lessons all together but in this huge room with a very limited group of people mm -hmm. with ventilation with face shields i don't know if you've seen this these kind of like yeah plastic <laughs> shield things so a lot of precautions a lot of uh mumbo jumbo but at least we we get to see we get to work as a group so oh that's good and then I'm guessing that uh, the origins of Dark Horse, White Horse are already intertwined in there as well with the timeline. How did that start? Yeah, that's also something that we've actually been formulating and, and scheming about <laughs> since 2018 as well, I think. Because I... Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. It's just uh, so many things have gotten in between. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. But um no, but the, the uh yeah, I think it was probably also 2018 or something. And we were doing a few shows with Mayan because back then uh I joined Mayan as a as a permanent permanent member. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were doing some shows in the Netherlands and Jord uh came to substitute Merel for a Merel Bechtold on guitar mm -hmm. for a couple of shows because she was on tour with Delane back then still. Um, and we were talking in the backstage and, uh, you know, just uh, basically like uh, uh, discussing, you know, like bands and projects that sort of like fall apart for us we could relate to each other you know because he also had similar experiences <laughs> uh and then he said like well you know now that you've got so much time on your hands it so happens to be that ruben Weige and i uh you know we have some music like would you like to maybe work on it with us and i was mm -hmm. like well what you know what what kind what does it sound like you know what kind of what, what kind of music and then he actually showed me a few snippets of um some of the songs that they had been working on and i was like this is this is really great it's really mm -hmm. great it was so thought out it was so um well wild and very heavy and very hectic and a part of me was like how how am i ever going to how am I ever going to write vocals for such a thing? <laughs> and the other one was like, oh, wow, this is really cool. So uh, I got super excited, like pretty much right away. And, and I started working with them. Like back then even, I think, um, uh, I remember, I think the first song that I worked on is a song that, that ended up in this EP that we're going to release. And it's called This Part. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think probably the next day I had already like come up with the whole thing. Oh, wow. And, um, and he was like, oh, holy shit, like you already, maybe I'm lying. This is my memory of it. It wasn't a day, but it was very <laughs> quick. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, that's awesome. You already have something. And uh, so then we just started, you know, like exchanging ideas and, and, and working together. And then a few things happened, you know, that kind of like <laughs> lost track a little bit of things. And the, mm -hmm. um, uh, but at some point we were like, okay, just, uh, you know, we're ready. We're going to go into the studio and we're going to record an EP. I told them at some point, like, okay, listen, uh, there's some, this was before I, I got sick, by the way, before mm -hmm. I, well, I was probably already sick, but if this is before I got the diagnosis. And I told them like, mm -hmm. listen, I think it would be nice if we would just like start with an EP, you know, just four or five songs, see what it does. And then we have this like nice and compact thing and we don't like stretch writing for like, I don't know how many years. Let's just, let's just, let's just release something. Let's just do it. And they say like, okay. Yes. Uh, so it was, um, yeah, in, in 2019, we were already in the recordings. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then I got this diagnosis, and I, I actually ended up recording the vocals while I was in in uh, in chemotherapy because I uh, I was very afraid that my voice was going to change, 
Okay, wow. Well. This whole like um, process, you know, because my body yeah. went through some really, really big changes. And um, luckily, that's not the case. I, th- mm-hmm. I can still say, <laughs> I think it's on the same, uh, which I'm really happy with. But uh, but yeah, I, I, I was really afraid that, that I was going to, that I was not going to be able to do it afterwards. So I thought like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it mm-hmm. now. And I, and I did. <laughs> it was kind of nice because then it gave me a sort of like, um, you know, something to focus on. Of course. Of, like just thinking about that the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was, that's pretty much uh, how this whole thing, uh, yeah, how it intertwines with the whole timeline that we just talked about. Yeah. That's amazing. And it's finally the time. Apparently this has been in the works for longer than I imagined. <laughs> and next week, it's finally out on April 16th. Um, the debut of the same name, Dark Horse, White Horse, will come out. Uh, and you describe it as Symphotech Metal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what What does that exactly mean? <laughs> what the hell? Well, um... I think it's it's very symphonic, but it's also very mm-hmm. technical. Uh, and I thought, like, well, symphon tech, let's let's go for that. Yeah, um, it's I think a really nice combination of all of the influences that we have, uh, mm-hmm. you know, with the three of us. So it's uh, it's very riff based, you know, because uh, you yort. Uh, mm-hmm. r- Kind of very gent, gent, even sometimes, and then you have Ruben who has this, like, of course, very whole symphonic layer. Sometimes some electronic passages and stuff going with it, and me, the you know, uh, the I love nice melodies and uh, you know, like the very soaring kind of vocal. So uh, that's what we did. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit more about your, your vocals? Because the few songs that uh, you have released until now are super impressive. I mean, I already knew you could do all, all of that with your voice, like everything. And uh, to see that like really put to practice um, is really great. And it is an impressive combination, but also... Um, harmonizes with the music really really well so it has a lot of energy and a lot of um force and 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 strength and um it sounds like you like nothing you ever did before so um how was that a challenge for you to come up with yeah all of the all of the new things yeah so definitely definitely because if you listen to if you listen to these songs without the vocals, which is basically what I had, you know, before I wrote them, mm-hmm. it's like there is, I mean, there is some melodic hints here and there, but for the most part, I felt like, what? You know, it's, it, was a, it was literally a puzzle, a puzzle mm-hmm. to, to uh, try to make out um, melodies on top of what the guys had made. And I mean that in the best way possible, because I love what I do. Mm-hmm. But, uh, harmonically, it's very complex. And uh, sometimes there's very, lo- very little room for interpretation. And sometimes there's a lot of room. So that creates like uh, a lot of possibilities. So it was, it was a puzzle, but I knew, um, I knew that I had to try and, and, and step up, you know, the energy and the, um, try to match what the music was doing. And, I think a lot of people would argue that I didn't because it's very melodic and you're normally used to hearing like screams and, you know, mm-hmm. grunts, that kind of stuff and, and with pair with music like this, you know, with instruments mm-hmm. like this. But yeah, on the other hand, I don't feel like, like that's really me, you know, even though I really like that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think it's when I'm trying to tell a story that is coming from myself, I don't really hear it in grunts, you know, I don't really hear Mm -hmm. it in screams. So I thought like, okay, what am I going to (laughs) do to make it, you know, like uh, hopefully impactful, but also very me. 
Yes. And this is what I came up with. Uh, all really, yeah, very, very demanding vocal. <laughs> it's just very, a lot of really high notes and a lot of uh, distortion and, and a lot of, uh, yeah, just t difficult, difficult things. So I really had to challenge myself. And I also, I have to admit that I really wanted to, um, I mean, I, I, I'm, I always try to write like in function of the song. I will never be, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to be self-indulgent, but at the same time, I wanted to also like basically display like, okay, guys and girls, the past three, four years. I've learned this <laughs> mm -hmm. much. So, you know, also like, kind of like show, this is what I can do now. Yes. Uh -huh. How are you doing? Yes, and rightfully so, because everything you do, uh, you do it really, really well. And it's also never overshadowing the the feeling that you put into the the vocals and hey. to the melodies and the lyrics. So, um it's it's really amazing. I, I I am so looking forward to listen to the whole EP. And um, I was also wondering, but you were al already uh, kind of describing as well how the songwriting developed with um, this new team that you have built. Yeah, well, um, I think uh, you know Jordan Ruben. They uh, this is something that I that I came to learn now working with them. They know they've known each other for years and years and years they were like high school friends so oh. they have yeah they have a um like a very you know they, they, they're they just like a, a, a well-oiled songwriting machine you know they mm -hmm. they work together really really well most of the time i mean even now uh uh i mean not so long ago moved to norway because uh he has a girlfriend over there mm -hmm. but um they used to uh, live uh, very close to each other in kind of like Groningen. I don't know if you know a little mm -hmm. bit of the uh, Northern Netherlands, right? No, yes. So like two hours and 45 minutes away from here. So we didn't mm -hmm. actually get together that very often, um, but they would get together very often, you know? So um, that they they um they had this way of working and this way of developing ideas and when i came in um well i th actually it was really great because i would just do whatever i wanted mm -hmm. on the songs and um they were they were really uh you know nice in the way that they would um you know just like adapt i think sometimes the music to to match what I was doing and we would like kind of like feed on each other's ideas in, in, in a sort of way. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's just great because we were, we we're all like very no fuss people, you know, mm -hmm. like they would tell me like, well, I like this. I don't like this. And I would do the same, you know, like, Oh, this is great. Yeah. I don't like this. And they would just like, okay, what, what should it be then? Oh, well, something more like, this other thing and then it's like okay great you know it's just very mm -hmm. um yeah very straightforward and uh nice <laughs> oh that's a good way of working yeah. that sounds very yeah. relaxed and <laughs> yeah i think for all of us if anything the 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 biggest challenge was you know putting the the puzzle pieces together like i said mm -hmm. Because all of all of our uh, back musical backgrounds are very different, so that makes the putting together of the pieces a lot more difficult. But I do believe that pays off in this mm -hmm. way that you get something that is a little bit more unique, maybe. Yeah, for sure, it is very unique, and. Let's now talk about the lyrics, maybe. Is there a concept behind the five songs or what are they about exactly? Well, it wasn't really a conscious choice to make it, to, for it to have a certain concept. But, um, well, yeah, all of the lyrics are very marked by the things that I was going through back there. So 
they are all very dark. <laughs> they are all very depressive. They are mm -hmm. partially self-deprecating and uh, and just uh, yeah, yeah, very, very dark. All right. Yeah, I think it was just a. I mean, if if, if I if I if I read back, um, I think like holy moly, I was I was really going through some sort of. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think you can just have like depression for a little while, but it was sort of like a depressive episode because I, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I started doubting a lot of things. I didn't, um, I started feeling very insecure about a lot of things and um, all of this. I mean, even though th th you could say that there's different uh, metaphors and different ideas and different sort of like approach to the lyrics, they all boil down to trying to you know like put in words what that feeling was it was sort of like mm -hmm. like a black hole you know like just yeah not wanting to not seeing any light not seeing any any positiveness uh <laughs> um yeah very dark and is that something that would extend to a future album maybe well I wonder because I mean I don't feel like that anymore. I mm -hmm. I uh I'm happy to say that I don't feel like that anymore. And yes. you know I have this 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 uh uh, uh Patreon page in which I mm -hmm. um with my Patreons I I I I share a little bit more maybe than, mm -hmm. than I normally well now I'm I think we've touched pretty much every subject already but um I, I do share like a, a little bit more deeper thoughts about the lyrics and stuff like that. And, and every time that I do, you know, when I'm talking about these songs and I end up, you know, like I write basically all the ideas behind the lyrics and everything. And then I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so happy. I don't feel this way anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, if, if for, for future, for future dark horse, white horse material, we would have to dig into our, uh, uh, yes, imaginations for topics that match the energy of the songs, but not necessarily are. I mean, I cannot. Yeah, I have to write about what I'm feeling, and this that's mm -hmm. not what I'm feeling. Yes, that is really good to hear. And is there any album in the works? Well, uh like like i mentioned at the beginning i i really have this need of 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 writing a solo album which is something that it's slowly materializing in my head mm -hmm. but i think i would really like to keep doing this sort of like small releases you know instead of mm -hmm. waiting for 2 3 years and then you know come up with this epic uh oeuvre. just you know like bam here's another five songs and here we go you know just like be a little bit more agile i want to say that's a very yeah IT, that's a very it thing to say but you know what i mean <laughs> um, yes <laughs> you know what i'm talking about um but uh yeah it's just i i would love to do stuff like that you know um mm -hmm. just to be able to to the, the thing is that what i always have with well it's what we ended up having with this ep as well you know I would like to be able to release stuff closer to the time where the things are actually happening. You know, like mm -hmm. when I have all these songs and that was just the circumstances, but um, which I wrote in, an, in, in a period of my life that feels like centuries ago. Mm -hmm. So um, I like that idea of being a little bit more agile, <laughs> of, you know, it's just like doing smaller bits, but more often. Yes, I think that also reflects a lot of what the where the music industry is at right now. Yeah. Um, a lot of artists, I think, are exploring that kind of possibility of just release releasing uh, singles and EPs or shorter things, and not just waiting until the the album. And um, I don't think it's only uh, the feeling that you just described that waiting until until the whole album is composed and produced and ready to come out. But also uh, from the consumer side, since we are uh, streaming music so fast, yeah. um, we also have get to, have 
have gotten maybe a little bit greedy and went more and more and more and faster and more. <laughs> so um, yeah, maybe that could uh, result as a very good um, business model almost for for dark horse, white horse. Yeah, and I I, I do believe that as well. Uh, but and and but still, the 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 biggest sort of like incentive for me to do something like that is to just have have a, a shorter period from conception to feedback you know it's just like mm-hmm. have it closer to release those the, 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 the those works when they're still a little bit closer to home and that it doesn't feel like oh yes i remember <laughs> <laughs> you know you remember back to 2018 we, <laughs> when we could still hug each other and then uh, that we were writing songs <laughs> back then about how sad we were <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just had that feeling before when you were when you were talking about Mayan and you and you said back then with Mayan and and I thought you were going to say uh, back then when we could still perform <laughs> when there were still live In concerts <laughs> when we were like actually oh my god oh. maybe head banged right standing right beside one another <laughs> right I I I yeah. I miss it extremely, mm-hmm. like I miss it like crazy. And on the other hand, I'm, well, I don't, I don't want to say scared. <laughs> mm-hmm. A little bit apprehensive to, um, how is it going to be? Like, I, because listen, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of an, um, well, I'm, I don't consider myself really an introvert anymore. But I think my spirit is a little bit introverted. Like, I don't yeah. like. I, I actually don't really like big crowds. I really don't like, mm-hmm. you know, I like, I would rather like be with a couple of friends in a nice, cozy, calm setting than in the middle of a uh, huge festival. Yes. Uh, <laughs> on this <laughs> jump stage. But <laughs> uh, so I'm actually really curious, like, oh my God, it's going to be so weird. It's going to be so weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually think um, just like, we as humans adapt quickly to new circumstances. That's true. As this past year has shown. I also think that our brains uh, still remember and we will get back to those old habits really quickly as well. That's a good point. And yeah. hugs, please. Bring back yes, hugs. Yes, all of the hugs. <laughs> I think when, when, when we're all allowed to do you know, like everything and, 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 and anything, I am going to... I'm gonna stand with a sign in the middle of the of the square, like, and just give out free hugs, <laughs> and we're all gonna just cry and and bask in the beauty of human companionship and closeness. <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing! It sounds beautiful. Going back uh, to the business uh, perspective, you re- you're releasing the EP after reaching 140. Three percent of the crowdfunding campaign goal. Yeah, that is a huge success. And I mean, you have, um, of course, by now a lot of experience with crowdfunding. Yeah. And um, uh, on our last uh, podcast episode together, as I said, seventy episodes ago, um, you also uh, spoke a little bit about uh, your presence on uh, social media, etc. So I have. Two questions, um, and I'm going to say them before I forget. First of all, after all of these experiences with crowdfunding and with uh, the music business, what is uh, the best advice you can give to independent artists like yourself? And the other one, uh, what has changed for you in social media throughout these years? But let's, let's stick with the first one. What would you say to uh, newcomers, independent artists who are promoting and maybe crowdfunding their own releases? I would say um, don't expect anyone to do anything for you if you haven't done something for them first. Mm-hmm. Um, the you know the whole pandemic and when I was recovering from my illness, which is uh, was also a really big period of time. I you know I got myself studying things and stuff, and 
also uh, about uh, marketing and marketing for musicians, the things that are important. And uh, mm -hmm. I followed these courses that made a lot of sense in my head because building a relationship with, with with a fan with a follower is not much different than 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 building a friendship you know like you cannot mm -hmm. you cannot like walk into a pub well none of us can walk into a pub right now but imagine <laughs> the times where we could just walk into a pub or at a party and then just approach someone that you don't know and go like hey do you want to sleep with me? They're not, I mean, that's not how we do things, you know? Well, maybe some people do. Most of us <laughs> don't. Uh, so that's the thing. Like, we have to realize, like, you have to realize that um, you first have to, you first have to introduce yourself to people, right? Mm -hmm. You first have to see if you have something in common, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you see if you hit it off. And if you hit it off, maybe they want to, stay in touch with you and if you stay in touch then maybe at some point they want to do you a favor mm -hmm. yeah. and and uh the the, the point from uh, that you go from uh, when you meet someone when you're actually asking them if they will help you move your house you know mm -hmm. that's a big there's a lot happening before that yeah so i think that's the most of us uh I don't think are often aware of of the whole process to get you mean the the, the process of getting, getting someone so involved with what you're doing to the point that they want to do you a favor mm -hmm. in this case maybe back up your campaign that's that's a big that's a big road to travel mm -hmm. and it's a road in which you have to be giving people a lot you know, like just being the first, like putting value in the relationship in the form of, um, you know, like sharing music, uh, sharing who you are, mm -hmm. putting your stuff out there, seeing who reacts to it, who likes it, making sure that, that those people, that you can stay connected with those people and that you can provide them with, with a lot of value, like uh hey i felt like recording this song on the acoustic guitar for you here you go mm -hmm. uh stuff like that at some point people are gonna think like oh my god uh i really like this person you know and um that's that's my whole uh uh hustle is i i feel like the people that follow me on social media they they know me quite well but i this that's also the kind of people that i am the kind mm -hmm. of people that I am. That makes no sense. The kind of person that I am. Yeah. Um, that I'm trying to be very honest and very out there. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that's the reason why I've I've been lucky enough to have such success in this with this kind of uh, strategy is that um, I think the, the, you know the the the, the fans and I, we have a sort of relationship. You know there is a sort of like back and forth. And and you have to keep, you know, like if they, you know, like pitch a ball at you, you have to hit it back, and you have to mm -hmm. respond to every message that you get, and you have to stay engaged, and you have to keep your fans engaged. Um, that's a really big answer to your question, but that's my best advice. Like realize, like if you have to, uh, if you want to start a campaign, and you think like, okay, who would back this? And you mm -hmm. cannot think of anyone. No one's gonna back it. If yeah. you're if you're gonna if you're gonna do something like a crowdfunding campaign, if you're gonna do something like 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 Patreon or something like that, you already know who's gonna back you up. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, then there's probably not that many people that will. You know. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of harsh. But I think, I think it's 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 a little bit accurate. Like it's it's a big ask, you know. It's a really big. Of course, ask. yeah. In our case, I'm I'm super surprised that we did so well because it was, it was a new project. You know, no mm -hmm. one knew what was it, what it was going to be like. Well, we had a song. We had two songs out. Um, but it's a big ask, you know. Like mm -hmm. 
hey, we're a new band. You want to give us your hard-earned bucks for some music that you have no idea how it's going to sound? It's a big yeah. ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means, obviously, that you have created um, a very uh, supportive community and uh, that you, as you were saying, you are putting in the work and um, keeping keeping the people interested, even interested in what you were going to create to create next. Yeah. And um, that requires a lot of commitment as well from your part, right? From the creator's part. Definitely. Uh... It's 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 a lot of work, and sometimes I wonder, like, do I should I do it? I I do every, I mostly everything myself. Sometimes I go crazy, um, but I also kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will, I, like I said, I will reply to every message that I get. Mm -hmm. The at some point when I was in treatment, I just like admitted, like, okay, I'm not going to be able to reply to everything I get on. Facebook anymore like let's just leave it just accept it but I try to mm -hmm. reply as, as soon as possible to every message that I get um and I try to make sure that I um know what 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 the people that follow me like and that we can share those things you know like the better that we feel like in sync the, 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 mm -hmm. the easier it is to create that sort of like sense of community I would say um, exactly so uh yeah but i mean i i think it has a lot of it's a lot of work but it has a lot of rewards because um you know i know that i have even if it's a small group of fans there's still like people that i know like are going to be looking forward to to everything i make and that's like the dream right mhm mm yes uh, and i'm not i'm not uh I'm not dreaming of, of, of playing stadiums and, uh, yeah, festival main stages. For me, it's about knowing that there's people out there that, that really get what I'm making and that they love it. And if it's just like a thousand, then it's fine. A thousand is a nice number. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole theory, right? It wasn't that one of the one of yeah. the big crowdfunding theories, the one thousand fans. The one, yes, yes, definitely. No, but um, and, and this, that's that's also how I feel, you know. Like, um, it's. I mean, I I would I maybe some people if they if if they hear that they would get disappointed because that's not a very sustainable model if you want to go on tour through Europe, for instance, or something like that. Mm -hmm. You need many more people that, that that know what you're making and that they like it um but for me that's that's uh i, I get my kicks from that you know to yeah uh have my little business you know and i i don't have to you know like basically give birth to my baby and then give it away to someone who might not understand you know what i want to mm -hmm. Uh, what I want my child to grow up to be like. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, it has I, I it has of I course agree. that kind <laughs> that kinds of rewards uh, that you uh, you have the full um, influence into what what you're putting out there, and all of this that you were just saying um, brings me back to the other question that was about uh, social media. Um, you were already describing a lot how you take care of these relationships with uh, with the people who support you. And a lot of that uh, comes through Patreon, since I am also in, in, your, in your Patreon. Um, I remember that is how I got the news of, of your diagnosis. And, yeah. um, and back then, it felt so personal and so... I felt really lucky to be in that kind of exclusive circle and and to to know how you were doing and why I hadn't seen you around on social media for such a long time. I can imagine that it, it also requires a lot of strength to um, make yourself so vulnerable and to share all those um, more intimate and private aspects of your life. Um, 
but I also remember all of the 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 well wishes and all of the cheering up all of the people who were who were really really rooting for you to get better all the time and and so that was that was also really heartwarming to see um was that difficult and would you do it again how has your 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 behavior um on on the networks so to speak developed throughout all of this uh first of all thank you uh well uh it's you know it's it's exactly what you say um allowing yourself to be um uh, vulnerable and to show vulnerability is i think uh, allowing myself to feel vulnerable and and share that with other people is i think one of the biggest lessons that I learned through this whole process. Mm -hmm. And and that's the beautiful thing about like a, a place like Patreon because I wasn't ready to just throw it out there. Mm -hmm. But I knew if there is anyone that I can share this with and that they're gonna get it is this group of people. Mm -hmm. So it was um yeah it it felt it felt a little bit more safe. And yeah. it's, it's it's a little bit silly because I um I wanted I don't wanted anyone to know for the longest time. I don't know why, you know, maybe it was just because I was struggling because I didn't want to be um pitied. Mm -hmm. I I do have uh, you know, I lost almost all of my hair. So at some point I was walking around with one of those little um hats you know mm -hmm. and um and it was really hurtful for me to go out because you could still go out back then and mm -hmm. uh, uh and notice that that there were people for instance at a cafe or something looking at me like oh poor little thing mm -hmm. i i didn't want that you know i yeah uh Because it was just a constant reminder of the shit that I was in, you know. Um, but then, at some point, I was like, I feel like I'm hiding from the world. I feel like I'm trying to do this on my own. That doesn't mm -hmm. feel right. And then I decided to put it on, on social media. And uh, all of the love that I got and all of the great wishes, I'm going to cry again. Uh, it was just so... So beautiful, you know, and at the moment I thought like, why the hell did I wait for so long? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am so incredibly grateful to all the people that send me so many good wishes and good vibes. Thank you all. Uh because I it it really it really pushed me forward. I mean, I don't know if you're the kind of person that believes in that kind of thing, but I do believe in that your mindset and the energy that you um exude and try to pull towards you that that somehow impacts your mm -hmm. organism yeah and i am convinced that all the positive positivity really had an impact on, on on how i'm doing right now and i still feel it and i i feel so blessed to have so much love It's so great yeah yes <laughs> for sure that's 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 really amazing to hear And there's something that you just said that um, I have been feeling myself lately and maybe observing as well. And we have talked about this uh, in lately in the podcast too. Uh, the need for safe spaces that is growing. I think that through the whole rise of social media, we got used uh, for the past at least 10 years, we got used to put so much out there that didn't exactly reflect who we were. We were posting this picture perfect life because it was out there for everybody else to see, right? And of course, yeah. we want everybody to think we're the happiest, uh, wealthiest, healthiest persons <laughs> in the world. And that's it, right? Um, and more so as as an artist and or as a public figure uh, that also makes you uh vulnerable uh to to critique and uh, lots of other unwanted comments so um we had an interview with um british metalcore band as everything unfolds um i don't know if you have heard of them but if you haven't re recommendation for sure um and charlie rolf um talk to us about how she 
and how it was her idea. It was important to her to have a safe space away from social media while still interacting with the fans out there. And they found this uh, safe space in Discord. And so they have their own Discord server. Right. Where, yeah, where the fans interact. And they also have this kind of exclusive uh, supportive membership club kind of thing, kind of like a Patreon, um, where they also interact with with another, a, a different but still kind of selective group of, of, of fans and of people. And I think um, maybe more and more there is this need to be more intimate, but with a more selective group of people. Yes, because maybe putting putting all of that out there, like you were saying, right? To 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 just open up those doors out to the complete world is a is a whole step further than maybe just do it and and share so much of your of your very personal life uh, with um with these other people who who you know for sure that are supportive and and where you can expect a bit a, a more positive um, feedback. Definitely, I mean. Um... Yes, I really experience it as being something uh, uh, very rewarding and 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 very nice, you know, because it feels like, uh, like you said, like a safe space. It's you know, and 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 for the people that follow me on Patreon, um, you know, they have they, they it's it's nice because they feel like they have the inside scoop. I think mm -hmm. you know, and and they get to hear everything first, so they are they that they have a little bit of that privilege. But I have a privilege as well. It's so yeah. it's it's really great. I the privilege to uh, just I don't know maybe like feel the waters before you actually like take the plunge. Mm -hmm. So that's very nice. And and I really agree with you. It's um, I think all of us, you know, and maybe uh, not entirely um, well, sort of related to that. I think all of us could profit from from trying to trying to get more up close and personal with mm -hmm. people you know yes. sometimes uh ditch the social media post and reach out to someone you know i don't know call them up and mm -hmm. them how they're doing you know yes. um Get generally like being generally interested gen i can't talk anymore being genuinely interested in someone like and how they are as a person you know mm -hmm. instead of global opinions or just like vague ideas no like how are you doing tell me like yeah um i think i think we definitely need more of that yes definitely some more um direct conversation than just throwing those people a like on a post and um that was it yeah Yes, yes, that's that's uh, something I have experienced um, in my personal life as well. So um, it's, I think um, it might be something uh, worth while for uh, for other artists and and you know newcomers as well to look into maybe these kinds of of um, closer or or smaller smaller kind of communities that are that are closer closer knit and. Um, Yeah, that is really, really lovely. Um, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us today for all your time. Another uh, quick question before we start wrapping up. Um, you did vocals again for Epica and uh, yeah. you are on their latest release, Omega. Tell us a little bit about that collaboration. <sighs> that was so nice because, um, well, uh, I was still you know, in the recovery process from my treatment, because I think it was in April or May or something that we recorded um, uh, the backing vocals in, in Sand Lane. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like a little taste of, of what it was, you know, to be back to normal and, uh, and just be able to be back in the studio. Because listen, I, I, if, uh, if, if the world is functioning properly and i am functioning properly mm -hmm. i i'm i'm at sand lane pretty much uh, every month recording something with yoast be it mm -hmm. back in vocals for epica or for this and that you know all kinds of different projects that that he asks me to do so 
I love that. I love that. It's it's one of my favorite things to do. If I could be in the studio every day recording, I would be extremely happy. Um, and of course, for the longest time, I couldn't do that, you know. And and mm-hmm. just being back there and feeling like ah, oh, you know, it just it felt like oh, I'm I'm still me, you know. It was really really great. And of course. Um, I mean, Yost's great. Kuhn was also there. It's so much fun with those guys. And uh, uh, when we did the, <laughs> the acoustic tracks later on, uh, it's always so much fun. So over oh, the top yes. and so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. The Spanish parts in the... Um... <laughs> <laughs> they said like, okay, so now we're going to do some kind of like like party sounds, we're just gonna do some, and now we want you just to just say stuff in Spanish. And I'm like, <laughs> What do you want me to say? I don't know, some curse words or something. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, <laughs> so yeah, so much fun. <laughs> and you run with it, and it was great. Um, so for everybody who's wondering, you have to go listen to um, the acoustic, uh. Omega Acoustic. Omega Acoustic, yes. That's yes. <laughs> that uh, a part of Epica's release. And um, yeah, um, it is so good to see you and to see you're doing so well and that you are uh, so excited about uh, Dark Horse, White Horse's release that's Yay. coming up. So, and um, as you briefly mentioned and have talked to, uh, have told us about that, you have told us about your, your day job before. Uh, you are in the IT world, um, so you must have an elevator pitch for the EP of Dark Horse, White Horse. <laughs> uh, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. Uh, but listen, th- I think if you like it loud, but also very melodic, uh, this 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 is stuff for you. I mean, it's, it's proggy as hell. It has so many things going on, but it's going to grab you from the very beginning. That's, that's what I think. And that's the music that I love to make music that has complexity, but also uh, a very accessible layer that, that pulls you in. And then every time that you listen to it, uh, you get to discover something new. That was too long for an elevator pitch, but <laughs> But it was perfect. It is also very, very full of power and energy. And um, it really um, sticks. I, I remember uh, the those singles that were already really released uh, sticking to my brain for days and days. And me just wanting to, to sing along, which is not easy. So <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Um, it is coming out on April 16th and uh, we're all looking forward to it. Thank you so very much for your time. We've been Thank over you. an hour. Uh, this has been amazing. Thank you, Marcela. And uh, yeah, is there anything else you want to say? Well, you know, just to reiterate, um, thank you all so much. You know, for for all of the all of the love and uh, all of the good wishes, uh, they have done their work. Uh, hang in there because things are gonna get, go back to normal very soon. Trust me. Uh, I know it's not a it's not an easy thing to do nowadays, but just try. Uh, we are alive, and we should be happy about that. And so try to enjoy every day. You know. Uh, I know it's hard right now, but but uh, just try to be try to be happy. Try to enjoy the little things, you know, the 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 the, the easy times, the the peaceful times, and we'll go back to full madness pretty soon. <laughs> Hell yes! Hell yes! Gratitude, gratitude for being for being alive and and healthy every day. And with that, also a lot of gratitude. Thanks everybody for uh, listening uh, out there. Uh, you can follow the Midland and High Heels podcast on Spotify, Stitcher, and uh, subscribe on Apple Podcasts or your preferred app. The show notes for this episode will be on metal-end-highheels.com slash podcast 88. 
And uh, that has been our episode with Marcella. Thank you so much again. And we'll see you next time. Yes. <laughs>